our political panel. Peter McGoran, Simon Banks. Peter, the Labor were the favourites. Did the result pan out as you saw it would? I'm, I'm not surprised by it, Kieran. I was. I thought they would at least govern in minority. Um, we've heard a, a lot of um, immediate analysis, which you've got to take with a grain of salt. There'll be many reasons why the Liberals failed and failed badly. It's not a good day, good day to be a Liberal. Look, Kieran, you've got to have conviction in politics, and that was lacking with the New South Wales Liberals as it has in all the other states. And you've, you've, you've got to believe in, in what your party stands for. And there's a whole library on what the Liberal Party stands for. Uh, John Howe's battlers are still there. Tony Abbott's tradies are still there. But this New South Wales Liberal government did not appeal to them. They, they went off in all different sorts of, of directions to what for what they believe would be political gain. But in actual fact, the electorate saw through it, thought yeah. they were opportunist and superficial, and, and they paid the price. And on, on that privatisation issue, which transformed the state, it looks incredible, Sydney, to what it was more than a decade ago, Simon Banks, but the, the former Premier didn't stick with that line of, of argument. In fact, uh, changed his mind, ruled out further privatisations, and that, as, as Peter McGoran alludes to, was up against a Labor leader who was very much fueled by his conviction against privatisation. Yeah, I mean, the answer in this business is if you've got a conviction, you've got to stick with it. And, you know, to Chris Minns' uh, you know, um, credit, you know, two years ago when he became leader, he, he targeted particularly cost of living as the issue, well before it became fashionable in Australian politics to talk about it, given recent events uh, overseas impacting on the prices that Australians are paying for everyday items. He knew this was a key issue. And when you look at some of those key western suburbs seats that uh, the Labor got its biggest swings in, that was because of those cost of living pressures, particularly tolls, was one of those issues that he cracked through. And he, I said, he was been campaigning on that for two years. That's the sign of a person who knows what the community is interested in, and he stayed focused on it right throughout the campaign. And, Peter, from the Liberal perspective, they're really challenged again, as it was in the federal election particularly, but with the Teals on the one hand, One Nation, and those Conservative minor parties on the other. Correct, Kieran, and they still haven't found the balance, although they did better against the Teals. Mind you, there's now eight crossbenchers in the lower house and God knows how many in the upper house, so it's not as if the Liberal Party has counted the, 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 the attraction of independence. It's just not the Teals that have got up. And, and a lot of that is because... Uh, their party administration is defective. It, it's not a. It's, it, it lacks the capacity, the resources, the ruthlessness and competence of their Labor counterparts. So they get candidates late in the field. It's usually the wrong candidate. Uh, th th yeah. They're not selecting people specifically out of the community. So there, there's a lot of soul searching ahead for the New South Wales Liberals. And Simon, just finally to you, your thoughts on that Latham. One Nation effect, which was significant in at least two seats in changing the the uh, the seats from Liberal to Labor. Yeah, and you might remember One Nation chose not to run in a number of seats, so it could have potentially had a bigger impact out there in Western Sydney. But there's no doubt um, you know, that One Nation did make some progress in that election, effectively doubled its uh, vote, uh, but still very localised in a few seats. So I think... Look, whatever you might say about Mark Latham, whether you agree with him or not, he's a very canny operator, uh, yes. and I think he demonstrated that again during this election. So